So we just gave Joe Burrow an absolute nightmare. You look at those numbers, 12 touchdowns and four interceptions. That's not bad, right? It's a pretty good season start. But considering before he entered the game against us, he had nine touchdowns and zero interceptions. Obviously, we had our way with him. Obviously, they still had some success on offense, and they were able to put up technically 28 points. There's a couple of short fields, but also we gave up seven whole points on a blunder of a read option, a triple option. We had a missed field goal. We had a bad decision not to go for the field goal again. So we are still leaving points on the board, but we were able to score 42. So it was still a pretty good game, and obviously the uh, offense was more on track than they ever were. We have a trade offer for Booth. Maybe not the worst thing by week. We also will likely have a Hudson. Actually, not Hudson back. Christian Harris back. Uh, which is great, but we'll still be missing our two DTs until week eight, which is against the Eagles. I mean, we have a real gauntlet of a battle here uh, to start this season, but let's go into this bye week, see what the uh, kind of scenario is. Should we take the time off? I mean, I don't think I want a team bonding retreat, but I would maybe give them the week off because we're in a pretty injured state right now. What is self-scouting? Stamina would be lower. I mean, I'm going to do the one that's smartest for us, which is XP. I'm going to go for the XP. But realistically, what I would do there is uh, is just take everyone off. You know, we, the injuries are high. Everyone just takes off. But a bonding retreat really isn't that, right? Like, the guys just want to stay home probably just chill rather than, you know, go hang out while they're all injured. So many beat up players early on. But uh, we have our training we got to do. And then... Uh, we're getting to week was seven against the Cleveland Browns. Another tough team. Also, did they not give us a player of the week? I'm a little shocked. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Oh, wow. He only missed two throws out of 24. Five touchdowns, 290 yards. I thought we would have one with Pierce because he had a great game and got back on track. But, yeah, that is a pretty good game. Missing two throws out of that. I mean, that's literally the perfect pass rating, I imagine. Uh, let's go on, though, to week seven against the Cleveland Browns. Any breakouts? Cold opponent. Oh, okay, so they're not as good of a team as I thought they were going to be. Maybe this isn't a gauntlet. I mean, it's still really tough outside of this one opponent. Cold opponent. They're 0-6, and apparently it's prime time because they thought it was going to be uh, a little bit closer of a record by the end of this stretch. Joe Burrow, after playing us back on track himself, Got to tell you that our teams, you know, they can take the ball away. We're still bendy, but uh, we did not break. We did not break. We uh, took the ball away a lot and overall had some successes there. Let's take a look at the team. Looking at the offense, obviously, uh, Nico Collins with an upgrade. He's 27 now, so, you know, his ceiling is, is starting to cave in a little bit. Uh, he's pretty good at release, decent route running, and very good at catching. Um, but, yeah, his, uh, his ceiling is dropping lower and lower and lower. Of course, Christian Harris, my boy, is back officially. Petrie with an upgrade as well gets him to 90. And we also have yet another weekly strategy. Before we do any of that, let's take a look at injuries, see if the Browns have any, because obviously we have had a lot. One more week for those two DTs, and then we just get Christian Harris back. The Browns with zero injuries, so they're healthy, but our roster is still a pretty low roster. As we're in 89 overall, they're only in 80. That is significantly lower what is their issue? Quarterback Deshaun Watson. Uh, I mean, he's his accuracies are dropping, but he's still good enough. Uh, running back Watford is the starter, who is a power back with some speed. Looking at the wide receivers, uh, they have a new group of receivers. Not a very good one, though. Very young, uh, very uh, needing of developing. Very fast wide receiver one, but man, wide receiver two, no speed at all there. Very raw. I mean, they need new wide receivers bad their starting wide receiver is probably a slot receiver like what are we doing here and joku pretty good this is a team that needs help foster the left tackle is actually not bad left guard is wyatt teller apparently looks pretty good centers iffy though right guard's a young player that's not really developing and then right tackles conklin they need to replace a lot on that offense merle the rookie with a pretty good block shed iffy power move miles garrett is obviously amazing DTs, lacking, left out, not even a coverage guy. Inside linebacker, not the fastest. Once again, both young. Nick Benito, once again, another pass rusher at outside linebacker. Corners, uh, no Newsome. Ward's great, obviously. Emerson's not bad. 
Free safety Juan Thornhill is regressing, and then Harding is slow. This is a very awful roster that the Browns are fielding here. I mean, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good about our chances of winning this one. Of course, the Jaguars are already 5-1 and one anyways, but uh, the coach of the Browns are struggling, but sometimes a team can trip up unexpectedly by looking ahead to the next game. No fear. We have no fear. What can I say? Not at all. It's in the NFL and everybody is a threat. No stress that week in. We stress that a week in and week out. Second you overlook an opponent is the second you make headlines for getting upset. Not wrong. The Browns are struggling and all players will have negative five break tackle, play rack, and tackle for this game. All players or just theirs? Because, like, how is that fair that a team that sucks has a scenario to suck more now because they suck? I mean, it doesn't appear to be our players, so, I mean... Okay, I can see why Damian Pierce breaks a lot of tackles. 99 break tackle. It's kind of good. It's kind of decent. Negative 8. His break tackle is actually pretty good when he's not, like, in the gutter for morale and whatnot. Look at these ranks. Holy crap. The worst scoring offense. The worst total offense. The worst passing yards. 26th in rushing. 22nd in turnovers. They do seem to run the ball a little bit more than the average team. I'm going to defend run outside like they say. And then their defense, their run defense is terrible. Kind of as expected because those DTs aren't great. So we're going to, uh, you know, heed the advice. Is that the right word? Heed? I think. I'm going to jinx it like I always do. Um, but, man, we're kind of cooking on this one. Maybe I don't. I don't jinx it. 42,000. That is probably my highest coverage uh, score for that scenario, star. No, nope. okay. Also, I don't know if it's because he's a bigger wide receiver or because he's slower and I'm not used to him, but when I do these, um, this challenge, for some reason, Nico Collins kind of sucks at it. He's he really doesn't get open too easily. Like, that's kind of open. I don't think he has the speed to really get to the, the 500 consistently. So I just go for the, the short one. Like, you see that? Like, the coverage is pretty tight. Even when I do the swivel, he's like, he's kind of on it. We'll say the last time I did this one, it was actually a little bit worse. All right, let's get our upgrades in. Nico Collins, I mean, it's going to be a little while until his next upgrade, I imagine. I might go release or um, short or... I might go physical or slot because I want, like, release slash short. And I think that's the best way to get it. Physical, he is a physical receiver. Two to release is nice, but nothing for short, sadly. They move on to Rudolph. What is he missing? Um... Medium to short, so we'll go with uh, deep threat, I suppose. He is becoming a deep threat receiver after all. Two, three to deep, one to medium, not bad at all. Now 83 across the board, which is kind of clean looking. Mackie, who's actually, you know, shown us some things. Don't really think it matters too much between possession and vertical, so we're going to go and keep that scheme fit going. A little bit of blocking, a little bit of catching. I suppose never hurt anyone. Uh, his catching is pretty low after all anyways. And what's his zone coverage? It is 90, so... I kind of think run support. I'm, I'm kind of thinking run support. 90 overall, now on the nose. Gets three to tackle, two to hit power. Hit power is only 76 now, but it's something, I guess. Uh, more of a receiver, Washington is, but let's go with elusive anyways. I want to give him a 90 juke move if possible. One juke move, one excel. I mean, he's still a while away from that. Here we go, another primetime game here at home. Against the Browns, who are obviously not really holding their end of the bargain of this uh, must-watch game, as uh, they are 0-6. I feel like they've been pretty bad for a while now, though. If I'm not mistaken, even last season, they were uh, not a great team. I remember seeing late in the season, they had like three wins or something. It was, it was really bad, and we see the state of this roster. It needs a complete rebuild. It really does. There's not, like much going on here like they, they don't really have like a cornerstone uh like side right they have miles garrett denzel ward and that's it right like they have a decent looking left tackle for the future and uh, and joku's okay but he's on the older side anyways and they just need new talent they just need new players they really need to get a high draft pick trade it down for a couple of picks and grab as many high uh second late first players as they can and uh, get this roster back on track. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, the old Cleveland Browns for a while now. And we'll see what happens in this one. Obviously, uh, you know, it's not common that a team goes winless. So they're going to have to beat someone at some point, more than likely. So uh, let's hope it isn't us. Let's, let's do our best to make sure it isn't us. 
Anyways, let's take a look and see if Deshaun Watson is a major blame point of their failures early on. I mean, the front office is the real number one, but let's take a look anyways in season. And yeah, I'm not great, but it's not like five touchdowns to like 10 picks or something. They're just, they're just really conservative because they don't really have much talent to move the ball. This running back looks actually halfway decent, so... Uh, that's probably their biggest playmaker at this point, or almost. As the running back, uh, actually, it's going to be the tight end who gets it. Going to lose three yards on what I felt like was going to be a gainer of at least seven. Same sliders as last week, as I've been really enjoying the games we've been playing, so why would I change what I like? And inside, a really good throw, but dropped by Njoku. Shoved in the back really hard and can't hold on to it. Of course, Christian Harris is in. And I will say, if that was me using him last play, he's feeling a little slow, and that'll be picked off by Clayton as this Browns team may be in over their heads. Well, let's go take a look at these uh, passing numbers for C.J. Stroud. Now we're going to be looking at Chris Clayton's interception. The ball is a little shallow. The receiver is open. It's just the ball doesn't have enough air on it. And it would have been tough because Sermon was there anyways, but either way... Clayton plays it perfectly. He's got a lot of interceptions like that over the last two seasons. But like we were trying to go on to our side of the field offensively, C.J. Stroud's numbers, they are improving. 12 touchdowns to 7 interceptions. He's almost at a 2-1 to one ratio, which is basically his, like, bar none minimum. They got too many players on the wrong side. Pierce may start off this game with a nice one, although it looks like a coverage player is uh, playing as an edge, actually, over there and... We gain six. We got the fake jet sweep, which, I mean, is going to be interesting. Just don't know if we have enough time to actually throw here. They've got a lot of players coming up for a potential blitz, and that will be a blitz. But Ford will catch it. Sifram will get him maybe a yard. As I kind of worried pre-play, they did get an untouched blitz. Unblocked blitz, if you will. That's going to be Rudolph underneath, who will show off the speed and burn Denzel Ward for just enough on the first down. We got a double move. Boyer threw that in behind to protect the receiver. Still got blasted, so imagine we lead that. Don't want a fumble, and I don't want an injury, so uh, I think it works out one way or another. It's going to be a read option. They're going to see the quarterback, but that's going to leave Pierce free to run, and we will score a touchdown. Griffin trying to get a push. Does, but gives up the contain. Oh, nice move by Watson, who wants more. He's like, you know what? What do we have to lose? We're 0-6. He gets injured trying to do too much. I mean, it's gonna he's going to look like a hero and not have to play for the dumpster fire. <laughs> it's just a win overall. And inside, we missed hard. I think that is the speedy wide receiver out there. I can't tell because he's supposed to be number one, which usually is on the left side for us. Left side, well, I suppose, for them. But in our experience... Nice little push. Huge hit on the outside by Pearson. And it will be a first down. Bringing more players up to the line. Oh, good uh, counter play, but Christian Harris is in there. Welcome back, buddy. We missed him. Oh, we knew it was there, and he gets a pick. First game back. He's running to the end zone. Does he have the juice post-injury? He does. Christian Harris. Welcome back officially. There he goes. We missed him. Look at that man go. Jumps the play. Seen it last second. And just has the speed enough, barely, to take it back for six. And, of course, an extra point is missed. Our kicking woes continue. It is going to be a keeper. Losing six is Deshaun Watson. The coaching here is not great either. I gotta say, the coaching here seems just as disastrous. Enough Scott going against the running back. And that's why, as Murray is just the best there is at blitzing from the inside linebacker position. And Watson kind of feeling a little bit of pain there. Maybe even debatably faking an injury. Because once again, why would you want to be out here with this team? Petrie on the screen. Actually going to get out there. Stingley. 
going to do a pretty good job. I mean, the running back doesn't really do much favors for him anyways either. The O-line needs to run out there, though, and just start pancaking. They have the size. What are they waiting for? Basically kind of let us dictate where the ball was going to, you know, the ball carrier had to go. And he ran out of room because of it. And Judge trying to cut it back. Almost had a kicker turn touchdown last week. Barely getting grabbed at the ankle. Pierce, once again, with a big game last week, having himself a season. Over 100 yards to start the first, uh, you know, the second half last week. Doesn't look like he's going to get there today, but looking pretty good still nonetheless. Oh, my Lord, that was a really rough late hit. Got a sweet play to Mr. Ford, who's got speed. So let's give him a chance to see what we got. And the blocks are there. Ford gets blasted against 10. Shot play could be here. We're going to have to get rid of this quick to the right, though. And Rudolph, good adjustment. Just about a first down. I actually don't know if I need to hand this off if he stops. No, it is keeper. Okay, that's, yeah, that makes sense. Maybe, I don't know. It's weird because, like, if he stops, usually if they stop, that means you hand it off. Short play. Ford trying to get around him. That would have been crazy. Still big play. First down. We're doubling miles on the edge. <laughs> it's a jet sweep. Oh, man. Now, oh, come on. I just genuinely don't understand how that's broken. Like, I just don't know why it is, you know? Although, I think that puts Stroud in the zone because it counts as a pass, right? Like, it's just a completion. Not even a great route, but because he's going against what appears to be a linebacker, Nico Collins will get it. I feel like Nico Collins has, like, lost a step ever since, like, mid-last season. Still pretty good on the crossers, but... Almost anyone on this team could be good on the crossers. And that is a really good catch. Perfect touch pass as well, just to make sure it gets over everybody on the line and whatnot. First down of the two. It's all Texans. Going with the play action. Good kind of block. Oh, Pierce deserves that. No. Pierce basically blocked the guy while running her out. He is him. That is so harsh. I just don't like the run look. I feel like they're on it. You know what I mean? Like, it just feels like they're actually covering it. This is, like, pretty much the same read option we scored from first time. From the line, quick throw, Mackey. This looks like an easy one for Rudolph, no? Yep, there we go. Perfect. Good bait off on the D-line, but, you know, he just played it too deep. And I'm stuck on the line. No, I'm not. I'm stuck on the line. Backer. Good hit by Murray. Gains two only. I mean, man coverage is kind of working, so why not? They're running right into our freaking rush. Oh, maybe not. Now they're going to gain some yards. Watford bouncing off of a tackle. First down. All right, Petrie playing shallow. Got to contain that outside, though. Good teamwork. Kind of needed everyone. Guy's a strong power back, it seems. Playing the extra player off the edge here. And, I mean, that's just so much traffic. There's really not much you can do there. Back to the blitz. Let's go Glover this time. Let's go... Oh, a little late off the line. Try to rip move, and running back's open. It's a tough play to cover. Good first down. From the 48-yard line. Kind of cover... Ah, it's going to be a penalty on us. I'm trying to cover deep, and then... Uh, we'll let me pull off. Once you kind of get in that press, like you have to, like, manually pull off. Letting go of A isn't enough. You, like, have to actually, like, run away. It's crazy. But it's true. First down. It was a completion anyways for them, but wouldn't have been a first down, obviously. And he drops it again. Why even have him out there? They need wide receivers so bad. Like, they would probably trade a first-round pick for Nico Collins. That's how desperate they are. Even though they shouldn't. And that's going to be picked off by Sermon for six. Holy crap, Deshaun Watson, what are you doing? What are you doing? Easy. We have been known to sell, though, so I'm not going to, like, just say, oh, easy win, it's over. Missed by Christian Harris, first down. But if it doesn't improve, this is going to be a doubleheader. <laughs> Let's just put it that way, because there is not a whole lot going on on their side right now. Free rush off the edge, and that's going to be a fumble recovery for Christian Harris. 
The game's going to be over at halftime. This is Bonkies. To the outside. Nice little, like, hezzy. King's going to get some real freaking action at this point, it seems. I mean, that's pretty good coverage. This would be a throwaway. Perfect blocking. We lose the zone. Safety's kind of on this still. Yeah, they played well on that. Gets blasted. We have a pretty good kicker, so it should still be a pretty decent attempt. But, I mean, they actually covered that well. Field goal is up and should be good. It's a bit of a deep one. That will be good. Second and four from the 31-yard line. Halfway through the second, but the game's probably already fully over. Will Anderson off the edge, allowing zero yards. Even as a Texan fan, I'd start to boo if they don't start improving. What a boring game. Oh, that's tough. It really didn't look like he was going to keep it inside. It looked like he was going to, like, break out. Because he came so fast in there. Yeah, he did. I said what I said. Move him over. Cover number 89, who's literally a bot. Nobody over on Njoku. Great tackle. Almost a first down, though. Brown's having an okay drive here. Get out there. Come on, Glover. You're a starter. Fresh set of downs from the 37. Try to swat. Couldn't. And dropped again by number 89. He's slow. He's got no freaking release. No route running. No ca I mean, his catching's not bad. He's just not catching the ball. Running back's wide open to the right, by the way. Instead, he just takes off. So many players open, he just misses them all. This is just truly an atrocious offense. And then their defense does have an okay front, but everything else is kind of iffy. That's perfect D again. Fourth down, field goal. If we score a touchdown before half, we're, uh, we're going to be playing a second game, and you probably won't see much from the rest of this one outside of like the highlights. Oh, how is that a penalty? We literally, our guy just blasted the kicker. Not that it probably matters for them, but still, you got to call it how it plays. And Will Anderson is injured. Oh, no. Judge on the return. That's a really interesting cutback. I almost got it. Rue shoulder. Well, it's fine. We'll live with it. Nico Collins off the quick throw. Probably our look. Nobody on him, so why wouldn't I go there? Try to get around. Couldn't. Hurry up to the line. See what we got. I'm really not even doing much on offense, right? Like, we've, we've really not put up numbers. Okay, they'll leave him wide open again. Trying to cut, can't. Not really ever been known to be a great, uh, you know, juke artist. Got the zig from Ford. Boyer stretch in the field. Probably had him. Not a great route from Collins, but... No, he gets blasted, I was about to say. But we show you why we throw it anyways. But I did not show you any of the sort. Donaldson's injured. Uh, not injured. In, because Nico might have been injured. Why wouldn't I? Why the hell wouldn't I? That's a great play by Ward. I mean, Ward is faster, but the size difference alone, you would have thought maybe uh, maybe something would have happened there. That's crazy. Ward played it literally perfectly. That is Denzel Ward. Ooh, Jesus. Should have set up a field goal. Instead, it'll be a punt. They actually did play pretty well on defense. But that doesn't change the fact that they're going to have to be at the 2 Yard line with 44 seconds remaining. I'm running full goal line to counter their goal line. Let's base. And great catch. I did adjust, but it was too late. Good adjustment by them, though. They're realizing the situation. You kind of have to uh, play risky there. You're down by like 4 billion points. Oh, I thought that spin into the, uh, the swim would have been sick. One time I left. They got a touchdown here. It would definitely open things up, but I still think this game is primarily over. Double move. Can't get it. Kind of needs to go out of bounds here. Does. A little bit of a late hit, but didn't really tackle him. Just kind of shoved him. Bringing the hardcore overload on that side. Clayton really holds on to that one. Clayton had a chance to undercut that. Clock's draining here. They might even call a timeout. They hike this. It's they're gonna run out of time. Okay, they will just go for the field goal. Fair enough. Could you imagine we block it? Imagine. 
It's up and good, so 6 to 30 at halftime pretty much is going to be the score. With one second left, Judge on the return. Ooh, found a little crease, gets to the 36. I mean, that's scary. 24 point lead. Don't know if we get the ball, but uh, yeah, it has not been a good day for the Browns, who are 0 6, daring at a 0 7 start. I mean, you look at our numbers, we really haven't done much, right? Like, we, our numbers are actually pretty tame. It's just they've given up so many points. Titans versus the Jaguars, that's a good matchup. And the Colts have their bye. Nope, it's not. They're playing against the, uh, the Steelers. Anyways, we have the you know the clock you know as the only thing really in our way. So at that point, you would run inside, try to waste that clock, win the game, and you still return it with Judd because he's dangerous. Try to kind of cut it all the way back middle again. I think that's the middle is the best way to get that breakaway touchdown. Every time we run this read option, they just bring like every player in the world. Pierce with that 99 break tackle slips off, but. Not a really good look at the start anyways. Maybe could have kept that, but there's just so many players that are, I'm like, yeah, probably not going to work out, right? Comeback route for Rudolph. We got the tight end underneath on the... Uh, take the tight end again. Uh-oh. Yeah, I was about to say taking the tight end again because that forward throw is so long, but not as long as the play action. That play action is crazy. When you're going with the screen to the left, if they run the mid, this is really bad for them. DT's on it, but not quite, and I didn't go to the outside because we needed to get as many yards as we could, and while not getting the first down here would put them in a really good position to score, I think you got to go for it. Like, how do they come back in this game if we get this first down? Like, I don't know if it's possible. It's a tough one. Great catch. Had Boyer, but those throws upfield we've been struggling all year with so far. Got the RPO. The only problem with that one is that nobody... Oh! Ford slipping off. Nobody's really out there to block, but... Slips off a double tackle, gains 9.5. Can do a lot with 9.5, let me tell you that much. Boyer, that's a tough one. Good 50-50 ball. Inside handoff, gets away. Breaks a tackle to the 40. First down. Kind of rolling out for nothing here. That's a really bad decision, but Boyer should have had that. It's been a weird game because they're... Uh... Is it a good throw? It is on the money. Perfect. Their defense has been decent. It's just their offense has been horrible. But I got to say that the drive their defense has given up here is definitely a dagger drive. So much clock is going away. Maybe could have waited for Boyer, but I just want to guarantee yards. It's eight yards clock more than halfway gone on the third on the first drive of the second half this is just not i mean if we score a touchdown here there's just no point in even looking at anymore game's over washington gets blasted but just about the first down maybe even better than the first down because that's even more clock wasted fullback dive Let's see what the fullback wants to do here and i don't know if he got it very interesting interesting very close it was only inches but still I mean, look at this clock. It is gone. Oh, Miles Garrett will stop us from scoring the touchdown, though. We're going to run it just to keep that clock going. Oh, good moves. Tries to slip it all the way to the three. Now, if they give up a touchdown after all of this, that would be harsh. Nico. Oh, no. That's game. That is obviously game. Holy crap. They do score the touchdown, but it's pretty much over anyways. But you know what? The backups are in. Maybe this is one solo video. Well, we can have a blowout every once in a while. Let's see King. Not a great throw, but gets the first down. We obviously pulled most of the starters out. Um, Rudolph is in still because, you know, he's still developing a little bit as a route runner, so let him be. Mackey and Brevin Jordan will be out there, and Ford will be out there as a, hopefully less of a slot receiver. Washington. Took an angle, and that is a bad one to take. Washington breaks it free and scores from 64 yards out. This Browns team is abysmal. Pepto-abysmal. Because it makes me sick. Yeah, how about that? Pretty good. 
Oh my god, another drop from number 89. He's actually got the most drops in NFL history in a single game. My man's makes Kadarius Tony look short-handed. He crazy. He's insane. How is he dropping this many? Oh, that is a perfectly timed ball, by the way. And Joku hasn't been bad. It's just he hasn't really looked to him too much. I still can't believe the drops number 89's had. That's crazy. A lot of them are contact. It's not like he's just dropping them just to drop them, but it is also kind of unforgivable. Griffin on the blitz. Not going to get there. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one Sermon. Misses the tackle, but does enough to knock him out of bounds. It's crazy blitz time, baby. Ah, I knew it was going. Couldn't get out there in time for his down. Sermon, we're going for it. A little early. And Will is not messing around, although apparently he gets away. Will re-grabs him. Or was it Christian Harris the whole time? I don't even freaking know, but... A tackle is a tackle. A stop's a stop. Who cares? Oh, Murray. Murray with the chase down. Number two. Almost like nanoed them there. Pulled off Glover on accident. Let's get in there, Griff. Oh, we got blasted. Recovered. No, get... Okay, what's happening? <laughs> Just, I don't know what's going on. 21 yards needed to quote-unquote keep the game alive. And Watson's going to roll out. And he will get a shot at it, but Clayton will just get an easy pick. He at least went for the throw. Uh-oh. No way. Clayton's taking it back for six. That's why I didn't want to celebrate, because you never know when someone's going to get you. And unbelievable scenes as Clayton takes it back 100 yards for the touchdown. And apparently another touchdown for the defense. I was just kind of simming the game out, see what happens. Unbelievable. Fourth and goal from the one. Hold the line, boys. Hold the line. And we get the sack. Pearson. Oh, no. There's no way this Browns team is this bad. They're 0-6, but wow. Mackey, bad throw. I just want King to get a couple of throws in here. I know we're at the six, but I don't really care. Screw it, read option. Even though it's against Miles Garrett, so he'll like always read it correctly, probably. Oh, maybe not. Damn it. How did he read it? Who the hell gives edge support to Miles Garrett? Like, what the hell is going on here? Ford. Oh, his own teammate took him out. That was a perfect throw. That sucks. That would have been some yards. Either way, that would pretty much be it. 58-13. to 13. The defense absolutely had their way. And then the offense obviously put up some decent points as well. But that was a defensive performance. That was a hell of a defensive performance. Clayton, player of the week, probably. He had multiple picks again with a pick six, so... It's pretty hard to beat that, but let's take a look at the numbers anyways. A little bit in-depth, a little bit closer. Five interceptions for Watson. Two touchdowns for Stroud. Really not a big game for Stroud. Really not a big game for the offense in general. It's just their their offense was the reason why that they sucked. Nico Collins is actually pretty good considering we had like nothing in the pass game or run game really. Just had nothing on offense. Murray with two sacks. A couple of tackles for loss, whatnot. Pearson with a sack. Griffin with a sack. Miles with a sack. They had uh, two players combined for a sack. Clayton with two picks. Sermon with one. Christian Harris with one. Stingley with one. And, uh, of course, pick six for Sermon and Mr. Clayton. Clayton likely going to be a player of the week guy. One missed extra point for Fairbairn, but pretty clean game there on uh, special teams as well. It's just the offense lacking, but just because they didn't need to do anything. The Browns just gave the game away. So we were like, play it short keep the ball away from them and waste the clock mode really not any reason to do any more than that uh going vertical which actually puts them in the scheme fit somehow which three catch of traffic's not bad we need regular catching though i can't can't believe how hard it is to get it another ability slot matchup nightmare receivers with this ability make sharper cuts and frequently win contested catches when covered by linebackers and linemen that seems kind of busted but we'll take it as that was literally randomly generated Going to go with slot for Clayton because, once again, slot is just busted on corners. Even though you could argue that we probably need more of a zone coverage than we do man. But he's still ridiculously insane anyways. And then Houston probably doesn't matter. He plays, like, never. So, 
a sort of like rare absolute need DT and we have no other option. He's just not really going to play. But you can see why we uh, signed him because, you know, his uh, power move had upside. But we found better and the team is absolutely rolling where we have to face the Eagles next week. Obviously, a cold opponent. What did we say we were going to do to them? Did we just say we were going to win? I can't really remember, but... However, we ended up winning. Got 1,000 XP for everyone. Might even have some more upgrades. But for right now, that's pretty much going to be it. We got to, like I said, play the Eagles next week, which are a team that on paper are tough. Don't know what their actual record is like or how they're playing, but scary team ahead as I thought the Browns are going to be, but they are a shell of themselves. They are really bad right now. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I really do appreciate your continued support on the channel. Maybe follow me at Twitter, Jumpy Care, second channel, Care Plays for non and content. And that is basically it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you guys come back for next video. But until next video, 